Where is all the antimatter? That's a question I've been hearing all my life. Cosmologists tell us that there should have been equal amounts of matter and antimatter at the Big Bang. When bits of matter come into contact with bits of antimatter, they turn into photons. So the question really is, why is there any matter at all? One hypothesis is there's an asymmetry in the laws of physics, which somehow allows a tiny bit extra antimatter to get used up every now and then. So after the dust settles and all the antimatter is gone, we're left with some small amount of matter. They're fairly certain the antimatter is gone because if it wasn't, they would see evidence for it. The photons made by the matter-antimatter annihilation are gamma rays. And when they look around with their gamma ray telescopes, they don't see this happening. I have my own solution to this question, but my physics professor informed me that any idea I could come up with has already been thoroughly explored by the many clever people that are out there. And that may certainly be true in this case, but I would ask that they do a better job of letting me know they've already ruled out my solution. Around 1930, we noticed the universe is expanding. If you play the movie of the expanding universe backwards, we see everything was in one place 13.7 billion years ago. Now, we need to be careful playing the movie backwards that we don't just bring galaxies together. Early on, there were no galaxies. So as you go back in time, the galaxies need to fade away. Cosmologists understand this. They have a pretty good idea of the whole process from beginning to now. They have computer models that start with the conditions of the hot Big Bang, run forward in time until they end up with the universe like we see today. To get this to work, though, they needed to add a couple kludges. They added superinflation and dark matter. They're fairly confident this is correct, but these are provisional ideas in cosmology. Cosmologists tell us the universe has no center. They correctly point out that just because we see everything moving away from us, that's not evidence that we're in the center. You would see the same thing in a galaxy far away. They liken it to raisins in expanding dough. Each raisin sees all the other raisins moving away from them. I've heard this assertion that the universe has no center many times. A few years ago, Astronomy Magazine ran an article called Why the Universe Has No Center, where they interviewed several scientists. We're told that the no center hypothesis is currently accepted because it fits the data, or the universe is infinite, therefore it has no center, or the universe is finite but folds back on itself. Another line of reasoning is, you know, hundreds of years ago we thought Earth was the center, and we now know the Earth goes around the sun. And for a while we thought, well, maybe the sun is the center, and we know that's not right. We orbit the Milky Way every couple hundred million years. After getting this wrong so many times, they decided that this where is the center question is meaningless. To me, this is extrapolation and sounds like they need a better argument. There's this thing called the cosmological principle. It simply says that the distribution of matter throughout the universe is both homogeneous and isotropic when viewed on a large enough scale. The idea is that if you imagine going anywhere, as far as you like, you're going to see the same thing over and over again. You're never going to come upon a region, for example, where there's no galaxies in front of you, only behind you. If the universe was finite, but then expanded to be infinite, then it had a center just before it became infinite. If you toss out the idea of homogeneity, then even an infinitely large universe could have a center. Imagine an infinitely large onion where you'd have all these concentric spheres with the smallest ones near the center. Consider the universe may be something like an onion. The center may be ridiculously far away from us. Say the entire observable universe is right here in this little spot. The center may be way over here. As you move out from the center, there may be shells of matter and antimatter. The laws of physics may be different as you move out. There's no reason to have multiple universes 
just one really big one where things are different in different places. Now, when we play the movie of the expanding universe backwards, in addition to having the galaxies disappear as they come together, the shells of matter and antimatter would come closer together with gamma rays forming more matter and antimatter. They found this thing they dubbed the axis of evil in the Planck data of the cosmic background radiation. There's a preferred direction, which is evil, because it goes against the cosmological principle. The signal for this axis of evil is very tiny and may turn out to be nothing more than noise. Or maybe it points us to the center of the universe. I have a couple things I would like to ask cosmologists to consider. First, consider dumping the cosmological principle. The antimatter may be out there beyond where we can see. If the universe is infinite, then we've only seen 0% of the universe. Second, stop giving us lame reasons why there's no center to the universe. It causes you and science in general to lose credibility. So that's my solution to where's all the antimatter question. The universe has equal amounts of matter and antimatter scattered about with vast regions of voidness between them. Our entire observable universe is embedded in one of the regions of matter. And there may be people made out of antimatter, living in antimatter galaxies far, far away. <laughs>